Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yoshihiro Saito from Merritt Surge High School. I'm Lauren Wu from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. Topological insulators, also known as quantum spin hall insulators, are recently discovered materials that have novel and robust properties. They have raised significant interest in condensed matter physics and material science research communities. Um, they are materials that are insulating in the bulk but conduct electricity at the surface or edge. However, um, the lack of large bulk band gap topological insulators in room temperature is hindering its advancement. So our research discovered um, a new class of 2D topological insulators that are sustainable in room temperature by chemical functionalization. These new materials have a huge potential in real life applications such as high performance electronics and quantum computers. So the discovery of topological insulator first goes through the discovery of quantum Hall state in 1980. At the time, physicists used what's called simultaneously broken symmetry to describe and categorize different materials. However, the uniqueness of quantum Hall state was that it did not have any simultaneously broken symmetry. So it was revolutionary in the fact that it did not fit into the conventional paradigm of condensed matter physics. So this state can be realized under uh, external magnetic field perpendicular to the material, as shown in the figure by the arrow, and under extremely low temperatures, in fact, near absolute zero. Um, it has an electrically conductive state only along the edge, and what's happening is that at the bulk, oh, at the bulk, the electrons are localized, while at the edge, electrons do not complete a full orbit, thus deflects along the edge. And this creates the electrically conductive state only at the edge with no resistance. And these fundamental properties are very robust, meaning that they are preserved even with the presence of impurities or imperfections. And uh, Klaus Klitzing, the discoverer of this uh, state, received 1985 Nobel Prize in physics. So what makes the difference between an ordinary insulator and quantum Hall insulator? And furthermore, what makes the properties preserved? Well, it's explained by Tholus in concept of topology. Topology describes the different characteristics and properties of objects, and in mathematics, uh, they define them by topological invariant, or sometimes called genus. And this can be simply said as a number of holes that they possess. And as long as they have the same topological invariant, the objects can be smoothly deformed into one another. So, for example, a coffee cup and a donut can be smoothly deformed into each other because it has one hole and one genus. And this concept applies to ordinary insulators and quantum Hall insulators. They have different topological invariants, but they preserve properties as long as there is smooth deformation. And this includes the geometric perturbations and, and impurities. Um, Tholus, Haldane, and Kostelitz received 2016 Nobel Prize in their work in topological phase. So after the discovery of quantum Hall state, physicists began to work in a material with similar properties but with no external magnetic field. And that was the discovery of quantum spin Hall insulator, and otherwise known as topological insulator, in 2007. So because there is no external magnetic field, it preserves time reversal symmetry. And furthermore, they used what's called spin orbit coupling. At the edge, there are two electrons with opposite spins propagating at different direction, thus creating a electron flow, a two electron flows actually, uh, with no resistance. And also the spins of the electrons and the intrinsic angular momentum supply their own, uh, essentially the magnetic field. And in the band structure, there's an interesting and unique characteristic called band inversion, where the top valence band and the bottom conduction band exchange its bands. In the past decade, many three-dimensional compounds were experimentally confirmed to be topological insulators. Compared to three-dimensional topological insulators, two-dimensional topological insulators have more advantageous features such as better flexibility and being easier to integrate into current electronic devices. However, they have a great barrier to overcome because of their small band gap. For example, um, graphene was the first predicted two-dimensional topological insulator but it cannot be observed um, experimentally because it has a weak spin orbit coupling and small band gap. Later on, mercury telluride and cadmium telluride quantum wells were the first experimentally tested um, 2D topological insulators, but these can only be observed at extremely low temperatures due to their small band gap. Since then, there have been no other experimental realizations of 2D topological insulators. 
For this reason, there have been extensive efforts to discover new two-dimensional two topological insulators with large band gaps. The key to our research is finding a method that can um, increase the band gap, and chemical functionalization is one, a great way because it can modify the band gap as well as preserve the non-trivial topological order. So we investigated functionalization of thallium phosphorus, thallium arsenic, and bismuth antimony systems with hydrogen and halogens. We perform first principles calculations based on the density functional theory as implemented in Abnet. PBE GGA was used to treat the exchange correlation functional and the pseudo potential was generated with the PAW method. BFGS was used for structural relaxation and the relaxed structure was used to calculate the band structure. So in figure A, we have the optimal atomic structure of the studied monolayers in hexagonal lattice. And in figure B, we have the side view of the thallium arsenic and thallium phosphorus monolayers. The two bulk atoms are in two different planes, thus making the low buckled configuration, and the functionalizing atoms are represented by the green X atoms here and here. In C, we have the atomic position of bismuth antimony, which favor a slightly different position than the previous two, where the high, um, higher functionalizing atom bonds with the lower bulk atom, and then the higher bulk atom uh, bonds with the lower functionalizing atom. And in figure D, we have the first Berlin zone in the reciprocal space with high symmetry K points of K, M, K prime, and gamma at the origin. And we use the closed circuit of M, gamma, K, M to uh, calculate our band structures. So in here, we have the selected results of thallium phosphorus and iodinated thallium phosphorus monolayer. So without spin orbit coupling, it uh, suggests a semiconductor-like nature with little or no band gap at all. However, with spin orbit coupling, it successfully opens up the band gap, uh, and that's shown in the red bands. And we also see a phenomenon called Rushba spin splitting effect, where the bands seem to double in each of the bands. And this is because the degeneracy of the spins of the electrons are lifted with spin orbit coupling. And this leads to other important properties, such as pure electricity, natural topological PN junctions, and topological magnetoelectrical effects. And we also see a band inversion in the iodinated thallium phosphorus uh, near gamma point um, and Fermi level. And this shows a great evidence for topological insulator. We now have the selected results of thallium arsenic and iodinate thallium arsenic band structures. And this is sim overall similar to the thallium phosphorus monolayers, since arsenic and phosphorus, uh, the elements, are in the same group 15. So spin orbit coupling opens the band gap, and we see, also see a rush by spin splitting effect. However, we overall see a larger band gap opening induced by the spin orbit coupling because arsenic atom, uh, the core of the arsenic atoms are bigger and thus uh, induce a bigger spin orbit coupling effect. For bismuth antimony band structures, the band gap is at the K point in reciprocal space rather than at the gamma point. And pure bismuth antimony has a very large band inversion, which indicates a topological insulator. And iodinated bismuth antimony has a band gap of 0.43 eV, which is the largest band gap in our study. This is a summary of our band gap findings. Um, the materials with hydrogen on them are predicted to be topologically trivial, while the materials with halogens on them are predicted to be topologically non-trivial. And this is because hydrogen has different properties from halogens, and also explains why um, there's a, an extremely large band gap in materials with hydrogen. In general, bismuth antimony systems have the largest band gaps because bismuth and antimony are large atoms, meaning they have strong spin orbit coupling. The thermal energy at room temperature is 0.026 eV, and all the band gaps exceed this thermal energy. In summary, we find that chemical functionalization successfully increases the band gap from the pure monolayer. And for each system, the iodinated monolayer has the largest band gap, ranging from 0.15 to 0.43 eV. Since GGA calculations underestimate the um, actual value of the band gap, it is almost certain that the experimental value will be larger than these theoretical values. Um, all the band gaps exceed the thermal energy at room temperature, making them usable for practical applications, 
And uh, these materials offer new options in this exciting research field and are potentially usable in quantum computers, spintronic devices, and more. As future work, we would like to consider in plain tensile strain as well as heterostructures to even broaden the potential of large bulk band gap topological insulators. And we, would, we can also perform nanoribbon calculations to physically observe the edge states uh, crossing near Fermi level and the electronic states uh, at the edge. And we can, uh, it's also interesting to explore different materials and combination of them, such as superconductors and topological insulators to realize particles such as Majorana fermions. We would like to give thanks to our mentor, Dr. Lo and Dr. Chen, for their guidance, our parents for their support throughout the research, Siemens Foundation and Discovery for the excellent opportunity, and lastly, thank you, audience and judges, for your time.